All right, everybody. Welcome. Um, my name is Norman Bauer. I'm the owner of Wyoke Mobile Device Repair. Owner, senior technician, secretary, and janitor. There's my relevance and my vitals. You can get in touch with me. What I'm going to be presenting here today um, is after the uh, installation, the hardware installation of a solid state drive in a Zune player. Um, I did a video earlier, uh, which I'll, I'll link to in the description, uh, to showing the process, but I didn't go in great detail at the time, um, you, you know, of the behind the scenes of actually what takes place uh, on the software side to actually make the upgrade uh, go through um, and, re and re reinstall the firmware. Uh, and since Microsoft has discontinued support for uh, for for Zune, uh, the only thing left to do is this basic hack in order to get it going. So here's what the process is going to look like. We're going to take and edit the host file. Um, then you'll unpack the, the firmware. And if you haven't already installed it, you'll have to also install the Zune player. And then you'll have to start a web server. Um, and then once the web server is up and running, you'll connect your Zune, and as I have there, watch the magic happen. So what I'm going to do for the um, time being is uh, walk you through this here. So let's get started. Okay, so in order to find the host file, you have to go to you know uh, C, you're going to go to Windows, System32, and there's my dog barking in the background. Um, FedEx man, I'm sure, drivers, and then you get to your Etsy folder. So, right there's your host file. Um, you'll have to um, uh, open it uh, as an administrator. So, uh, you know, normally you would have to open up Notepad first as an administrator. That way you can save the file. Now, I've already done this, so I'm just simply opening it to show you um, what it is. Now, we're going <clears> to <throat> input here the uh, loopback address for 127.0.0.1 and we're going to point um, point that to uh, resources.zune.net which is what when the Zune player actually goes to try to download the firmware off the internet it's actually calling that URL there um, and since that URL has been discontinued and there's, Microsoft no longer provides any services to that then that means that this part of this hack is is we've got to do it provide that service locally the upshot of that is it's going to move a lot faster uh, as you'll see in a moment here um, when I get to that portion of it I'm going to hook into Zune and you'll see it just flies by really really super quick because well <laughs> it's local it's not uh, pulling down from the internet so you save that um, and then close it so then we want to go back up to our C drive or anywhere else where you feel comfortable uh, unpacking the Zune firmware file to files to um, it doesn't have to be C it can be in your home directory uh, anywhere uh, and here's the the folder that I've that it was named automatically and I just unpacked it to C on uh, Zune update which works for me and inside there's all my firmware files that are, that are all our firmware files that we're going to need in order to uh, install the new firmware um, back onto or onto the new hard drive. From there, we're going to open up a command prompt. Now, well, this is how I do it. Um, you basically, this is the HTTP server portion of it. Um, I personally don't like having a full-blown web server running on my desktop. It's a, it, it exposes an attack vector um, for uh, you know malicious software or malicious actors to come in. And it's just, you know, it, it hogs up resources for something I have no need for on my desktop uh, other than the occasional. So myself, I use Python, and I use, Python has um, a simple HTTP uh, server, um, and they've had that ever since Python 1, I think. It might have started in Python 2. Uh, on here I have Python 3 installed. Um, but you could probably do the same thing in Ruby. I suspect even PowerShell, though I've never looked into it on PowerShell, um, where you have a, a very simple serves up and, and takes get and post uh, uh, get and post requests from uh, from a URL. 
Um, you could probably even do it with, well, I know you could do it with curl. Um, but anyways, uh, it, or you can use IIS or, or, or Apache, whatever you want to do. Like I said, I about myself, I personally, I just need a simple web server and this does everything we need to find. So if you're going to install Python and use Python, here's what you do. Um, so we're going to CD into the Zoom directory or the Zoom update directory, which is mine is uh, C Zoom updates. And then from there, we're going to call um, the Python executable. Um, I don't personally have uh, the the another thing. I don't personally uh, use Python um, environmental variables to point to the executable. I rather on the on the command line I'd rather call it out completely that way if something goes wrong it's just it's you know uh, if I download some bad code or something like that it can't just automatically call Python it has to actually know the full you um the full path to it so that's me again you might just be able to type Python and, and go away with it but me this is how I keep it installed um and uh, and I actually I don't use Python on Windows too often anyways it's it's rare uh, you see uh, program files x86 and mine is installed in x86 yours probably will be too if you're using um, Python if you're using Windows 10 or Windows actually anything Windows 7 and newer um, Python and there I've called the executable I'm going to feed it the switch of M and I'm going to call the HTTP uh, server and of course I want port 80. If you don't specify the port it's going to default to um, I think it's either 8080 or 8000 8, I forget off the top of my head um, but specify port 80 so that we can feed this traffic up and then simply press enter the server starts up and at this point um, we're ready to start serving up the uh, or ready to connect our um, Zoom player. So I am going to minimize all this and hook up Zoom. Connect it to the PC. Make sure it's on. Alrighty. So Zoom should automatically start up, and as it is, there we go. Um, all right, so there we go. Required update. This is what we're actually going going for. So now it is getting ready to uh, work with our local web server, as we'll watch here in just a second. So we'll accept this, and there it is. It's hitting it. It's going down, and then oh, try again. One more time. Accept. See how fast it went? All right, this is, I think, must have hit the cancel button by accident. Um, so now it's going to, we're doing this in real time. I'm not going to edit this out. It's going through, it's on step three. The Zoom player itself is telling me to please wait. It's rebooting. And we're waiting. It's got the Zoom. All right, asking me to please wait one more time. And the progress bar on the Zoom is about halfway through. Um, I guess it's probably formatting the drive at this point. And installing the files. And then it's rebooting one more time. It's going. Alrighty, this is looks like it's getting ready to finalize everything. 
Now, what I've done this in the past, um, it, it's gotten stuck on um, step three, uh, and then I just you know hit cancel and it, it booted into to the uh, Zoom firmware and everything was fine. Um, and so this is like a third time done. Okay, it's rebooting. there there we go it is finished and you can name it whatever you want we'll call it zoom and cancel because I don't want to do this this poor man's my stuff on this this uh, fellow's device and that is all you do, you do to it. I mean, and you can see here it, it it's hit the um, it, it served up all the information that it needed, the firmware files, and we're good to go. Thank you for watching.